Teachers around the world should be what's used in this bill. It's a pleasure to follow the two noble baronesses. May I remind the House uh, of my background as a board member of the Centre for Data Ethics and Innovation and also declare an indirect interest as my eldest son is the founder and studio head of Mediatonic, now part of Epic Games and the makers of Four Guys, which I'm sure is familiar to your Lordship's house. <laughs> I'm speaking today in support of Amendments 2 and 93 and the consequent amendments in this group. I'm also supportive of the various App Store amendments proposed by Baroness Harding, but will not address those directly in my own remarks today. I was remarkably encouraged on Wednesday by the Noble Lord the Minister's reply to the debate on the purposes of the Bill and especially the priority the Minister and Government were able to give to the safety of children as the primary purpose of the Bill. Uh, the Minister underlined this point in three different ways, and I quote, the main purposes of the Bill are to give the highest levels of protection to children. The Bill will require companies to take stringent measures to tackle illegal content and protect children with the highest protections in the Bill devoted to protecting children, and again, children's safety is prioritised throughout this Bill. The purpose of Amendments 2 and 93 and consequent amendments extend and deepen the provisions in the Bill to protect children against a range of harms. This is necessary both for the present and the future. It's necessary in the present because of the harms to which children are exposed through a broad range of services many of which are not currently in scope uh, within the Bill. Amendment 2 expands the scope to include any internet service that meets the child user condition and enables or promotes harmful activity and content as set out in the schedule provided. So why would the Government not take this step, given the aims and purposes of the Bill to give the highest, the highest protection to children? The Diocese of Oxford educates uh, every day some 60,000 children in our primary and secondary schools. Almost all of them have or will have access to a smartphone, either in late primary, hopefully, or early secondary school. The smartphone is a wonderful tool to access educational content, entertainment, and friendship networks. But a smartphone is also a potential gateway for companies and children and individuals to access children's inner lives in secret, in the dead of night, and without robust regulation, and therefore expose them to harm. Sometimes that harm is deliberate and sometimes unintentional. And this power for harm will only increase in the coming years without these provisions. My Lords, we in this House need to be alert to the generational changes in technology. When I was 16 in secondary school in Halifax, I did a computer course in the sixth form. We had to take a long bus ride to the computer building in Huddersfield University. The computer filled several rooms in the basement. The class learned how to program using punch cards. The answers to our questions came back days later on long screeds of printed paper. When my own children were teenagers, when my eldest was 16, we had one family computer in the main living room of the house. As a family, we were able to monitor usage. Access to the internet was possible, but only through a dial-up modem. The oldest of my grandchildren is now seven. Many of his friends have smartphones now. In a few years' time, he will certainly carry a connected device in his pocket and potentially have access 24-7 to the entire internet. My Lords, I want him and millions of other children to have the same protection online as he will enjoy offline. 
And that means recognizing that harms come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some are easy to spot, like pornography. We know the terrible damage that porn inflicts on young lives. Some are more insidious and gradual. Addictive behaviors, the promotion of gambling, the erosion of confidence, grooming, self-harm, suicidal thoughts, the encouraging of eating disorders, the fostering of addiction through algorithms, the erosion of the barriers of the person. The NSPCC describes many harms to children on social networks that we are all now familiar with. But they also highlight online chat, comments on live stream sites, voice chat in games, and private messaging among the vectors for harm. According to Ofcom, nine in 10 children in the UK play video games, and they do so on devices from computers to mobile phones to consoles. Internet matters say that most children's first interaction with someone they don't know online is more, now more likely to be in a video game like Roblox than anywhere else. It also found that parents underestimate the frequency with which their children are contacted by strangers online. The Gambling Commission have estimated that 25,000 children in the UK aged between 11 and 16 are problem gamblers, with many of them introduced to betting via computer games and social media. Families have been left with bills, sometimes of more than £3,000, after uncontrolled spending on loot boxes. Online companies, we know, design their products with psychological principles of engagement firmly in view, and then refine their products by scraping data from users. According to the Information Commissioner, more than a million underage children could have been exposed to underage content on TikTok alone, with the platform collecting and using their personal data. My Lords, as Baroness Kidron has said, we already have robust and tested definitions of scope in the ICO's age-appropriate design code, definitions increasingly taken up in other jurisdictions. To give the highest protection to children, we need to build on these secure definitions in this bill and find the courage to extend robust protection across the internet now. We also need to future-proof this bill. These key amendments will ensure that any development, any new kind of service not yet imagined, which meets the child user condition and enables or promotes harmful activity and content, will be in scope. This will give Ofcom the power to develop new guidance and accountabilities for the applications which are certain to come in the coming years. We have an opportunity and responsibility, as the noble Lord the Minister has said, to build the highest protection into this bill. I support the key amendments standing in my name. I first of all beg the indulgence of the House.